Hi. Welcome to this podcast. <laughs> I never fucking start the intro like this. I don't know. I'm trying to fucking shake it up, but nah, it's never good to adapt. Stay the same way forever until you fucking die. Hey, everybody. What is up? It is Stan the Man. Welcome back to another Stan the Man podcast. How are you guys doing? Hope you guys are doing really well. It's Sunday, the 24th of October, 2000 and goddamn 21. All right. Hot Girl Summer is officially over. Move over, because now it is time for Depressed Sluts Winter. You heard me right. Uh, but there, there isn't like only one downside to this uh, time of year. Let me tell you that one downside. It's beginning to look a lot like fuck this. <laughs> Everywhere you go. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm, I swear to God, I keep fucking, I enter the store and I keep fucking hearing Christmas music. It's October. Why the fuck are people playing Christmas music in October, man? <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop. Oh, man, no, no, I'm not going to stop. I did some shopping this morning because yesterday they weren't, yesterday they didn't have anything that, they didn't have everything that I needed. They said, okay, no, it'll be in stock again tomorrow. So here I am, fucking 10, I don't know, I don't know, I don't even remember when I fucking headed out. And I don't know if we can, I don't even remember when I headed out. Okay, I'm talking to my girlfriend along the way. Okay, she has to hang up for some reason. So I have to turn on the radio because, you know, my Bluetooth thing fucks up after I fucking call someone. It won't go automatically back to the music player, right? So I, I fucking switch over to the radio for a little bit so I can listen to some tunes because I don't like driving in 30 minutes of goddamn silence. I don't want to be alone with my goddamn thoughts. <laughs> so I fucking turn on, I fucking turn on the radio First station, first song that comes up. I want to laugh on Christmas. There's just one thing I need. Okay, I, I had two options. Okay, drive off of the over... Drive off of the overpass and greet certain death with open arms or drive 30 minutes of silence. I choose to drive in 30 minutes of silence. Though that overpass was looking mighty tempting, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> oh, my freaking God. Like, what is with people? People are already freaking putting up Christmas lights and stuff like that. I'm not going to be here for Christmas. I'm not going to be here for Christmas, so I'm not putting up any fucking decorations because what's the goddamn point? <laughs> Like, what is the guy that, like, last year in my other apartment, when I spent last year in my other apartment, the only Christmas decoration I fucking had was this, like, little, it was like these, uh, these trees that you would hang, it was like these trees that you, could, that you would hang on your rear view mirror in your car, but instead I just fucking put that against the wall, like, yeah, that's my fucking Christmas tree. <laughs> Where's my water? Don't tell me I spilled, where the fuck's my water bottle? Yep, I... It would appear that I filled up my thermos only to freaking leave it. Yeah, I can see it right now. It's staring at me in the goddamn... It's staring me at the eyes. It's staring me around the eyes like, well, 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 if it isn't the consequences of my own actions. <laughs> Fuck me. Now I have to... It's not even that far away. It's not even a far away. It's just the nerve... The nerve... I just don't... I just don't have to... I'm in the middle of recording a podcast and I have to fucking stand up and walk three meters to get it. And then it's just going to be you. It's just going to be like you. It's just going to be like you staring at a microphone and I don't know, some possible thing appearing in the goddamn corner. Who knows? Maybe there's some paranormal activity shit going on over here. I mean, when I, when I tell people that I live, when I tell people that I live alone, okay, they look at me like, aren't you, aren't you afraid your place is haunted? It's like, no, I'm not. Plus, if it, even if it is haunted, where the fuck am I going to go? <laughs> I'm going to go back to my parents. I'm sorry. I'll, I think I'll prefer, I think I'll prefer the hauntings. All right. Because come on, I've never, some, like, what is the point of being a ghost? Like, seriously, what is the point of being a ghost and sticking around in one place and go, <laughs> and what, what's the point of going, goes, I'm spooky. <laughs> like, dude, you're immortal. You're immortal. Can phase through walls, dude. I just fucking eavesdrop on my fucking neighbors. Like, oh yeah, that's how it is, right? You didn't like my key lime pies anyway. You fucking bitch. Okay, cool. And just fucking haunt them until they move out. <laughs> oh man, like, Christ alive. 
What, how fun would it be to be a ghost and just fuck with people? <laughs> uh man. I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's like, why, why, why do ghosts like have like this need to just stay in one place? Oh, no, they're connected to the place because it's some fucking tragedy. Like, I... I don't know, that tragedy, hap- tragedy happened when they were alive. Since that tragedy happened when they were alive and they are now dead, they have already moved on in, I don't know, some fucking spiritual sense. Like, I may be pulling this shit out of my ass. Like I said, I don't believe in an afterlife. All right? I genuinely do not believe in an afterlife. Okay, do you want to know what I think happens after you fucking die? All right. I want you guys to take this thought experiment for a little bit. Try to remember anything from before you were four years old before you were try okay remember your first memory and try to remember anything before that you can't and i think that's what happens when you you die you're just gone oblivion everything you've done everything you've said everything you've loved will mean nothing because why the bio, the bio, chem, the biochemical and electrical reactions inside your brain will just stop, and this freaking jello that's in the middle of your fucking skull that formed you and your personality just stops working. So everything you've ever thought about is just gone. I think that's what happens, and I'm totally fucking okay with that. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna lie; it sounded scary at first, all right, but. I don't know. I think I'm more afraid of what it feels like to die than to than actual like dying. Will it feel like a fucking nap? Like a thing like, or will be like, or does it feel like you're being barbecued on an electrical cable? Like I remember there was like this sign on the internet. Yeah, they like posted it at some like transformer cable and stuff like that. And they said, "Okay, cool. Do not touch this. Not only will you die, it will hurt the whole time that you were dying." That is an effective strategy to make sure people do not fuck around with your transformers. Oh my freaking god. Anywho, what the fuck have I been doing right now? Um, like my legs are a bit not not exactly fucked up, but they are a bit stiff cuz for the first time in my life I ran more than 15 kilometers. I, 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 we ran 18 kilometers for like a long run to make sure people are ready for the 10 K not because I feel like now I feel, I feel like this again, now that I ran 18 kilometers, 10 K is going to be fucking nothing. Right. But I didn't go it alone. We went as like a group. Right. And I might try it alone one day. Okay. Maybe if I pick, maybe if I pick a pace where I don't get tired quickly, I'll just, I'll just enter, I'll just enter the same autopilot that you enter whenever you're in a fucking car. You ever had that fucking feeling? You're just driving down the highway and then all of a sudden you fucking realize, holy fuck, who the fuck's been driving my car for the past 15 minutes? Like your mind becomes static. You're not even listening to the goddamn song. You're just... <laughs> like there's got to be a point with there's got to be a point where the mind just go on goes on autopilot, right? There just has to be, I don't, except when you're a fucking sociopath. Like, I don't know. Oh, that was a weird speed bump. It wasn't a speed bump. He just ran over an old lady trying to cross the street. <laughs> you hear that? That is the sound of someone who has no prospect in life. He can't find a decent woman, so he decided to he decides to pull he can't find a job, so he decide and he didn't he can't find attention and love from his parents. So he decided to sup up a car and disturbs the peace of a goddamn neighborhood. Fuck me, man. Like fucking hell. How small does your dick have to be to fucking do that shit? Echt. Newsflash, buddy, you might think you're cool, but everybody else thinks you're goddamn annoying. Like, oh my god, look at that. Oh my god, look at that beat up Toyota Terracell that's fucking held together by duct tape. Go, oh my freaking god. Bet your ass he doesn't have insurance. (laughs) Oh my god, and when people like that crash, like, I don't know. I'm not saying it's a tragedy whenever they crash, but fucking when you see these people drive, you're just not surprised. (laughs) You're just not surprised anymore. <laughs> Anywho. Okay, there is a reason why I wanted to do this podcast. Okay. I want the majority of this podcast I wanted to talk about. Okay, there's been 
I'm pretty sure anybody who has a Netflix subscription knows about Dave Chappelle, right? Everybody who everybody knows about Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle recently released a special caused called, called The Closer. And all right, and The Closer has been like it's completely surprising to me, okay? I touched on this subject briefly. Yeah, I touched on this subject briefly in my last episode. And to be honest, I thought that it would just like peter out within a week. I thought, you know, these folk with the funny hair and the overalls will eventually move on to the next shiny object that comes into their social view. But I was wrong. They're really, they actually hammered down. They even staged a full-on walkout at Netflix's Hollywood office. I'm just asking, where was the walkout when Cuties aired? But hey, that's just me. I don't know. I don't know. This, this, okay. Dave's special, The Closer, has, gen- has understandably generated a lot of controversy to the point where the walkout, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. this walkout, I was astounded by the amount of people who attended this walkout. I thought, nah, it's, it's just going to be like three or four people. And then I was hit with the hard reality. I was hit with the hard reality that this movement has been gaining a lot of traction over the last few years. We're not talking about just a couple of individuals. We're talking about a community here. And not only that, you see counter protesters here. So you see a clash between two communities. Those who fear and those who feel that those who feel that the jokes of David Chappelle are transphobic and can be violent and can even be violent in some way shape or form and those who are propon- those who preach freedom of speech who just think jokes are still funny and to be honest i'm still leaning on the jokes are still funny side okay my ipad when i need them for my notes to make sure i don't go on fucking rants and that's the wrong password no nope, it's it. okay cool it just froze for a little bit that fucking never happens it never fucking freezes Oh, man. Anyway, I'm just looking at this. I'm looking at the protesters all the time. I'm like, wow. These people look really weird. <laughs> like, look, not weird in the sense that they fucking look off. Weird in the sense that, oh, my God, Dawn, and I love your outfit. But your nails, honey. What about those nails? Like, their nails, freaking, there's this one There's this one person on camera. Her nails look like freaking the tips of highlighters. <laughs> I don't know. People, I think we're genu- we are genuinely seeing the repetition of the same shit. Okay, okay the idea of pro- st- protesting something because it's offensive to your way of life and community is not exactly new. Christians did it all the fucking time. I remember right here in Aruba, and this happened fairly recently, about a bit more than half, no, about, yeah, about a bit more than half a decade ago, five years ago, which isn't that much, all right? Conservative Christians were protesting a law that allowed same sex that allowed same sex partnerships to be official here on the island. And keep in mind, we're in 2021 right now. We've just entered the two fucking thousands. <laughs> All right, they were devastated, saying they were devastated, saying that it would harm their community and be a bad influence to their children. They used to do the exact same shit with rock music. Remember when uh, Christians came after Marilyn Manson because they thought his, um, his they thought lyrics to one of his songs was tied to the Columbia shooting, to the Columbine shooting? Like, come on, how fucking... Ret- uh, I shouldn't say the hard R. <laughs> I should not say the hard R. I've gotten in enough trouble as it is. I don't know. They said that the lyrics were offensive. Yeah, they said that the lyrics were... Offensive to their people, way of life, and their community. Why does that sound familiar? I'm going to say that again to you. They said that the lyrics, even though the lyrics were not pointed directly at them in any way, shape, or form, these lyrics still were offensive to them, their way of life, and community. We are seeing the exact same shit happen like right the fuck now. All right, words that don't really have meaning don't usually have an effect on don't usually have an effect on a crowd this freaking large. But when it gets to your neck of the woods, oh yeah, when it gets to your neck of the woods, suddenly it's offensive. I'm gonna stop the camera for a little bit because we are approaching 15 minutes of film time. Heads up! Oh my god, I'm a fucking moron. 
I was a dumb dumb. I nearly recorded a section without turning on the camera. And you can hear my frustration in the podcast. Anywho, anywho, plowing ahead, plowing ahead. Like I mentioned, everything is funny until eventually it arrives in your neck of the woods. But you have to have the emotional maturity to realize that, yo, they're just jokes, my guy. They're just jokes. Okay, even look, even during, uh, I think it was like CBS on, uh, or CBN. I don't know. There's so many. The, United, the U.S., you guys got so many fucking news channels, man. But in one of those news channels, okay, there was this woman. Uh, I, I assume she's transgender. I'm not really sure. And she goes, okay, we didn't care about Chappelle until he came after our community. Okay, so you basically did not give a shit about this individual until he eventually came after you. Meanwhile, your community, y'all's been coming after him for fucking years. And when he understandably decides to clap back, you guys have the audacity to get mad. (laughs) You guys have the freaking nerve to feel offended. (laughs) I'm I'm just I'm just laugh. Do you see the irony here? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Now remember, folks. Even though I don't res- even though I don't necessarily agree with this whole transgender thing, at the end of the day, these are still human beings. Okay, like me and you, they have thoughts, feelings, desires, fears, nightmares, and events that led them to this point in their lives. Okay, just because they have fucking I don't know freaking imitation clam between their goddamn legs, that doesn't make them any less human than me or you. And we gotta fucking respect. And we got to fucking respect that. But I also believe that the majority of people my age or whom are experiencing the 21st century as we know it are soft. Words are violent. Are you kidding me? Words are violent. The only time in my life where I... The only time in my life... When words became freaking violent was when my mom hit me with a goddamn dictionary. Though That's the only occasion that I can think of where words actually became violent. Words actually became a projectile weapon. <laughs> oh my God, your mom abused you. Nah, it's called discipline. It's called freaking discipline. It's not fucking, amu- it's not fucking abuse. Anywho, I'm no saint either. Me and my colleagues, we joke around. And look, we joke around each other every, every fucking now and then, okay? Every, not, not every now and then, every fucking day. We try to poke holes in each other's masculinity, basically. And sometimes, I'm not going to lie, the jokes do land a little bit close to home. And when they do land a little bit close to home, they don't, it does, it's not the best feeling in the fucking world. It isn't. But at the same time, you have, you, we have the emotional maturity to realize that, yo, they are just, in fact, jokes. Okay, if you were, if if Dave was up there just freaking screaming tranny all the goddamn time, okay, or some other wild shit, okay, that's a, that's a whole other story. It, this would be a whole other story whatsoever. Okay, like I mentioned, uh, I keep going. I keep going back to that freaking person who go. We didn't care about Chappelle until he came after our community. Okay, so you didn't come after him through every other thing, but right now, when he suddenly decides to clap after fucking years, literal years of being dragged by this community, he finally freaking says the shit that's on his mind again. Shit that you guys have been doing for fucking years. He does that in one special, and all of a sudden, you guys are mad. Like I mentioned... I don't even have to fucking explain the irony right now. Look, as far as I know, I could be completely wrong about this. I could be completely fucking wrong about this. There seems to be a fucking huge divide between audiences and critics of this fucking thing. Okay, audiences form the the part of the silent majority. They seem to be enjoying the content that Dave is putting out because, okay, it's the raw, I don't give a fuck energy, all right? That we've been missing for the past few years. It embodies the need of self-expression through humor and jokes. Okay, I think we're seeing the exact same thing right now. This topic or this idea that a person can simply... Okay, look, look at... No, 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 no. Okay, 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 okay. Think about this. Okay, I gotta backtrack a little bit. 
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the classic. Poli- I'm gonna do the classic uh, American politician thing that they use to get voted. 9/11. <laughs> okay, bear with me for a little bit. Bear with me. How many people make 9/11 jokes today? To this fucking day, how many people make memes about it on Facebook and even TikTok? Thousands even. And nobody gives a shit. No, there's there aren't any fucking protests, no walkouts on YouTube. The thing is, the 9-11 terrorist attacks were two decades ago. Okay? Some people, not all. Some people, again, not all. Parentheses, but still in emphasis, emphasize, not all. Okay, had time to process this shit to the point where they can deal with this tragedy with humor. I think we're slowly seeing that happen right now. This topic or this idea that a person can basically, that a person can simply change the way that they are born is still relatively new. People need to adapt to this concept and way of life and that doesn't happen. That, that just simply doesn't happen at the drop of a fucking hat. It doesn't. It really doesn't. Now, that being said, okay, there will come a time in the next 10 years where switching genders may be as normal as coming out of the closet. There is no denying that. Okay, there is no denying that, no point denying it, and there's no point trying to slow it down. Now, I said that this topic is new. Meanwhile, it isn't. People have been identifying for transgender for fucking years now, decades even. But it's only now that this movement, and that this movement, this idea, this community has suddenly burst on to the spotlight, okay? And I think that these people, they, they like being in the spotlight, okay? But they fear that their position in this proverbial spotlight is so precarious and insecure that they view any act against them. Any act against them, including Dave's harmless jokes, all right, is a threat and should be dealt with as such. Now, as I mentioned, there is a huge divide between critics and audiences. You go on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay, first of all, who the fuck goes to Rotten Tomatoes for reviews anymore? Anywho, you go on Rotten Tomatoes, okay? The critic review for this special is 45%, according to the last time I saw it. 45%. The audience, 95%. Critics hated it. Audiences love it. Why? You need to keep in mind that a critic, I think... Okay, I think a critic, the fact that sometimes they have to appeal to the opinions of the masses for their opinions to not only be taken seriously, but also be heard in the first place. Therefore, their opinions are not grounded in reality. Their opinions are, their opinions are merely grounded in the reality they have constructed for themselves, okay, in order to appeal to these goddamn masses. Therefore, their opinion doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> I don't know, man. You could come. I don't know, man. You could come at me with as many fucking degrees as you freaking want. Like, if you if I see a movie, I genuinely enjoy it, and then you sit down and give me the scientific reasons that you didn't enjoy it, I'm still gonna disagree with you. I'm not gonna elaborate it. Like, is it such a crime to just like something? Meanwhile, audiences love it. As I freaking as I said. I think Dave embodies like the zeitgeist of comedy that's been missing in the last few years, okay? Because apparent comedy used to be an open house. It used to be a place where the court jester, the court jester can not only be a court jester, but also be a philosopher, present you with ideas and ways of thinking that you may never thought about it, present an angle to a certain situation that maybe you never thought about, all right? You might agree with it, you might disagree with it, but I think the most masterful comedians would just let you, you know, think about it a little bit. It didn't fucking Dave's shit did that to me. But I think that's why audiences love this. It's such a fucking breath of fresh air in this freaking world that seems so suffocated by this quote unquote woke movement that this idea that words are violent words are painful fucking fists are painful okay bullets 
are painful. I think these, I think most of these folks haven't been in enough real life, real life, life or death situations. To, okay, I used to, how do I know this? Okay, why am I speaking this? I used to be the, I used to be that fucking kid. I used to be that fucking kid, like, hey, remember, be nice to everyone, fucking words hurt and shit, okay, and then I grew the fuck up, all right, I grew the fuck up very fucking quickly, quickly, it took me nearly getting killed, losing people, and again, nearly dying, going through a lot of fucking shit to realize this, okay, it's a painful fucking process, but then you start realizing that, yo, there are certain things that you shouldn't give a fuck about, all right? You just got to give a shit about the important stuff in life. The problem with these people, they care about every fucking thing. Here's the reality of life that mommy and daddy never fucking told you about. In life, you already are going to have an opinion on something. Sometimes people will not agree with your opinion. That is life. Sometimes you will see an opinion that you will not agree with. That is life. Life does not have to fucking adapt to your way of freaking thinking simply because it makes you feel bad. All right? If you go on with that fucking attitude, you are going to be miserable. All right. It's no one. No wonder my, our freaking generation is the fucking most depressed. It's not because of oh no, cost of living is going up. How the freaking boomers ruin the goddamn housing markets is because we don't know how to fucking callous our freaking brains. We don't. Our brains are soft, mushy, brittle. Christ, a fucking live. <laughs> anyway, I'm done with that fucking rant for now. People, what happened at a time where you can disagree with someone and still be friends? What happened to that fucking time? Like, I, as I fucking mentioned before, as I mentioned, all right? Now, okay, as I meant, I, why am I keep, why do I keep repeating myself? There, I said in my previous podcast that the person who might stage this walkout, if I were the CEO of a company, those people would be fired. But I wouldn't do that. Because I would face a public lynching. The CEO of Netflix is currently facing a public lynching right the fuck now. Because they fired the person who organized the walkout. Not because the fact that they organized the fucking walkout. But the fact that this person allegedly, okay, still nothing has been proven, allegedly leaked sensitive information about this com this comedy special to the press. To the press. And therefore, all right, like, keep in mind, these are fucking allegations, but people are already, oh, no, they're, they're, they, they, oh, no, they fucking, they fired him because they're trying to oppress him, they try, no, they fired him because he broke the goddamn contract, you broke the rules in the most egregious way, you have demonstrated to me you are not trustworthy in this company, and therefore, you need to go find somewhere else to work, pack your things, goodbye, ad wiedersehen, I wish to never see you again. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't say that. You got to be nice. You got to appeal to everyone, every fucking snowflake out there. Ah, oh, my freaking nice. Um, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, my freaking God. Oh, my freaking nice. Oh, my freaking nice. Look. You don't have to be a nice person. Be a good person. Being a good person doesn't always involve being nice. Christ alive. People need to fucking figure this out. People need to figure this out fucking fast. <laughs> because I think our generation is weak. And we are going and we are approaching hard times because of these weak people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, hey, I'm, I, I swear to fucking Christ, slowly but surely, I'm starting to sound like a goddamn dictator. <laughs> Oh my god, like what what the fuck's gonna happen? A bunch of freaking people and overalls are gonna come at me fucking to quote Dave Chappelle. Ooh, look at them cheekbones, look at the big thick Joe Rogan neck. <laughs> uh, uh, can you fucking imagine that? You meet a girl. Alright, you meet a girl, you fuck you meet a girl, alright, things are going great. Right, you fucking make you fucking make out, you go to the bathroom and all of a sudden he whips and all of a sudden she whips out a dick bigger than yours. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you do in that situation? Do you back out? Oh, there goes my camera. I got to stop the recording. Okay, then maybe that might be a good time to do this rant. Uh, that's that's not a good rant. All right, recording on Fuji. Recording NFL Studio.
Christ alive, I just fucking listened back to a chunk of the podcast. <laughs> and I'm fucking hearing some of the shit that I said, like, wow, I'm fucking, I'm fucking tweaking, son. <laughs> Ah, who fucking cares? Ah, who fucking cares? I might get more dislikes in another one. I might get dis more dislikes. I'll get someone like, oh no, you should. How dare you support these fucking? Shut up, Jesus Christ! Shut up! Can you do that for like fifteen seconds? Shut the fuck up! I like this. It is funny. Not because I think it offends you. Not because I think it treads on your way of life. I just find it funny. Is it such a crime to find something funny and say something funny? All right. Sure, there are going to be people like, that's not funny. Well, I'm going to be simple. Okay, you just mock them. That's uh, I like making people even more mad. That is not funny. That is not funny. It is very offensive to people within our community. And we didn't. <laughs> just fucking, just fucking, just fucking say that. Are you gonna, are you gonna, are you gonna continue to speak to me that way? You speak to me that way. <laughs> Stop that. Stop that. <laughs> Like what are they gonna do? Punch me? <laughs> what are they gonna do? Punch me? Most of those, most of the, out of most of them are built like corn stalks. <laughs> uh, buddy boy, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> what? Why the? F I'm actually like I'm actually tearing up. I'm actually tearing up. Why is that so funny to me? Why is? That, I don't know. I just put that mental image in my head. All right. Oh Christ! Imagine I fucking walk. Imagine if I, you know. You know, because of my bad luck, I'll walk into, you know, one of those big buff transgenders, you know, the ones that they say they didn't shoot roids, but I'm pretty sure they shot roids. <laughs> they, you know, the ones that got biceps bigger than my fucking head. Oh, boy, I'm not, I, I would not survive that fight, but I, I would go down swinging. I will go down swinging. I will admit, okay, because why? I'm not a good fighter, ladies and gentlemen. I, like it took me fucking losing fist fights to realize, hey, you know, you know what? I'll just be the funny guy. <laughs> Anywho, I gotta keep this podcast short. I gotta wake up early tomorrow. Anywho, guys, hope you guys enjoy this podcast. This is Stan the Man signing out. If you guys wanted to see, if you guys want to see more of me, feel free to follow me on Twitch because I will be streaming soon before I head on out. Uh, feel free to follow. Uh, should I link my? Inst I have an Instagram. I have a Facebook. I don't link them to YouTube. I got no idea how to manage my social media, Christ. My social media stuff. Anywho, this is Stan the Man signing off. <laughs>